All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're gonna be uh, cooking up some counters, if you will, because y'all keep asking for cauldron decks, so I got one. Let's see how good if it is, or how good it is, or whatever. <laughs> Speaking's hard. If you wanna buy any cards for today's deck or any other game stuff, remember to go to coolstuffinc.com. You can use code DRAGON. That'll save you 5% at checkout. And Cool Stuff Inc. always has cool stuff in stock. Okay, so the trick here is we're gonna be trying to go as heavy as we can on plus one, plus one counters. But one of the main premises is gonna be because of Agatha's Soul Cauldron. This card lets you remove a creature, or actually any card from a graveyard, but if it happens to be a creature, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on all your things. And then anything you have with a plus one, plus one counter gets the benefit of other cards that have been removed with the Soul Cauldron. Now, if we can get something removed like a Voldaren Thrill Seeker, then all of our stuff will have the ability to sacrifice themselves and deal damage. But even if we don't get the Cauldron, this is still a fine card putting counters on other things and letting us sack for some bonus damage, which is pretty good because sometimes these decks can struggle to get across the finish line. Now, some of the other cards we're gonna play are gonna be things like Botanical Brawler, because it's, it's bigger for everything else getting counters on it, which means we wanna play a bunch of stuff that automatically enter the battlefield with counters to speed the process up. That means we're gonna be playing stuff like Enduring Board Warden, or Bond Warden, which is cool, because when this dies, it gets to put counters on other creatures. Same can be said of Iron Apprentice and happens to be colorless. So these are actually two really good cards to help us keep growing the rest of our team. Also a card that's underplayed here that we're gonna give a look is Recommission. It's a colorless and a white. It lets you return a creature with mana value three or less, which is gonna be the majority of the things in this deck. And the thing comes into play with the plus one plus one on it. Following that up, we're actually gonna be playing Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, because it lets everything else get an additional counter, but also can just add counters on its own. And we're gonna be playing some Quarian Beast Caller. This card's actually really pretty good here as well because we have a bunch of cheap things that are gonna be able to make this get larger and possibly play two things in a turn. Now, to help with this deck, one of the concerns I had was possibly just running out of cards too quickly. So we're gonna play a few copies of Questing Druid as well because this can let us get access to a couple more card and then the card itself also ends up benefiting from getting other plus one plus one counters. So that's kind of the bulk of the deck. There's a few other things in here, but if you want the full deck list, it'll be at the end of the video, like always. If you do want to download the deck list directly, you can go to the description below, look for the little blue arrows. It'll take you to our Moxfield link where you can download today's deck and see all of our other decks that already have a bunch of Eldrain cards in them. For now though, let's go see how much we can cook up with this cauldron. Oh man, I I like have to beat this opponent on principle, right? Because he's Uncle Creepy. <laughs> all right, we're going to keep this. Uh, it's a pretty ugly hand, though, to be honest. At least we can cycle away one of these uh, spires. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. Not completely sure what we're looking to do here other than this. And I'm doing this because it does give us a way to play two things next turn. This gets to come into play as a, with uh, an additional counter. I don't think they're going to kill that. I mean, if they do, we have a backup, so we're not overly concerned. Cool card to draw doesn't particularly help us out here. This is likely to die to everything, but I don't hate that. Um, We can, well, we're for sure going to play this. This is a given. And then we can either leave mana up to Questing Druid during their end step, or just, I think we just play the Cauldron now. Actually, I'm okay with that. Like, we know the Apprentice is dead, so it's whatever, right? <laughs> like... Yeah, exactly. We were assuming that. So, no surprises there. We just have to uh, be real careful in how we deal with stuff the rest of the way. That doesn't help us, actually. I think we're going to do that in pass. There's a chance they just play either a Planeswalker or Shieldred here. Oh, they missed a land. Maybe they're going to do neither. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and do this then. Oh, gross. All right, well, oh, no. <laughs> That's, wow. It, wow, it would have been difficult for that to be any worse. Jeez. Uh, Boy. I guess we play. I guess I should have played this anyway, because if it died, we don't really care. Since we already had the Soul Cauldron. I should have just played it last turn. I mean, we put counters on it. Let them kill it. Actually, doesn't hurt us. Sh 
Sure, sounds great. Now, I could have tried to put the counters on the questing druid, but we knew they possibly had a kill card, and we actually want that in the graveyard. Doesn't look like they have a way to destroy artifacts or enchantments here. Or at least not artifacts. Hmm. Oh my goodness, you are kidding. What is that? Is that five lands in a row? That's that's rough. Alright, well, if they have a way to destroy a thing, then they have a way to destroy a thing. Go to our graveyard, remove this tutor. I mean, our land dies, our land dies. What are we going to do about it? Oh, I did that wrong. You know what I could have done? Okay, it didn't matter. They had to go for throat. I was going to say, I could have actually activated to put a counter on it first in case they tried to hit it with a... Uh, something like a cut down and then use the instant speed ability of the cauldron would have been smarter. But matters not at the end of the day. And that was a go for the throat, so, you know. Uh, sure. It did. Oh, I should have sacrificed it. Gosh dang it. Forgot I could do that. Well, I wasted five damage, y'all. Uh, this is interesting. So I can do this. I wouldn't have enough, though. I'd have one, two, three, four left for this. That sucks. Um... Hmm. What do I do with this information knowing that? I guess we just do this straight up. Alright. Pass the turn. If they try to kill it, then we can just charge it with the soul cauldron and then fling it. So that'd be fine. Not the greatest thing in the world, but you know, it's something. Well, it says pass. Alright. I'm I'm good with letting that ride. Okay, we have a land. We need four for three for that. So one, two, three, charge, still be able to play this, could fling a thing. Probably kill our land, which is gonna be sad. Assuming this is just some type of control thing, and they need a second white at this point, right? Because nothing else makes sense here. I would have been able to kill the opponent on this turn too, I'm pretty sure, if I'd have flung that last. Drill Seeker, which is pretty terrible. Alright, my own fault, though. This is what you get when you play a bunch of new cards for the first time. Oh, do they not have a... You have a kill spell. Don't play with my heart like that. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead. Go to our graveyard. Remove this. Uh, put a counter. Hmm. And then we'll just sacrifice this. Oh, I just realized I wasn't able to sacrifice the other thing anyway, because I don't think I had the proper counters on the other card. So yeah, I didn't actually mess that up. Maybe I thought I would... Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I played this turn all out of order. Alright, should have made that two more damage. Yeah, I just goofed this whole thing up. If I win this, I don't know how. Like, this was this was terrible. Alright, you got it. Oh, we can bring something back. That's cute. Alright, I guess we do this. Put counters on it. Remove a creature. Put counters on it. Fling it. Okay. Well, we got to win. Yeah, I don't think I particularly uh, deserve that one, honestly. I think I played pretty badly. That said, though, I think in hindsight I wasn't able to fling the other creature I thought I could anyway. I just wasn't thinking straight. But either way... Whatever, outcome is, we still won. The deck did what it was supposed to do. Hopefully, the other games go a lot smoother. And let me say that for people who show up to different content creators' videos expecting us to play perfectly, first off, I in no way say I'm playing perfectly ever. I assume if you watch my video, assume there's going to be like two mistakes every game and you're going to have a much better viewing experience. But beyond that, 
like the idea here is we're also slamming, or at least I am, putting videos up every day, which means I'm trying a bunch of different cards and a bunch of different combinations. There's definitely going to be mistakes, but sometimes the decks are still good enough to win. So there you go. Sometimes the decks are even better than we're giving them credit for. Oh, we get to go first, huh? Okay, let's keep it. Mostly because even if they kill something, we have the recommission, which is kind of nice. We definitely don't hate that. You got it, friend. I will not block. Coming as a 2-2. Two -two. Get our attack on. In the turn. This might be a case where we can just get the creatures big enough that the red deck can't really do anything. Yeah, sure. No blocks. You got it. I need an untapped land next turn is what I need. I mean, if opponent tries to kill the brawler... Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yep, still not blocking. Alright, they don't have any other... Oh, no! Let's say they didn't have any more one damage things. I mean, one mana things. Ah, man, if that land was untapped, we'd have had a huge turn here. But such is life. Uh, I'm going to attack with just this in case I feel I need to block something with the Brawler. Don't know that I do, but... There's also some, in some interesting interactions here because... Like, depending on what they do or don't do here. We could potentially... Well, now that's going to be too big. I was going to say we could block... Oh, actually, it's only a 5. Nah, still not quite enough. Let's see, this art creature control with the plus one plus one counter gains life link and indestructible. I could remove that to make this a four four. Not that big. Alright. I think we do it anyway though. Because we do get a little life off of it, and I don't want to go to nine with them having a fistful of cards here. It feels a little bit dangerous. So we sack this, use it on this. And then we can remove. Go to our graveyard. This duder. Put the counters there. So we get a little bit of a bigger creature. Doesn't kill them, but we at least offset some of that attack. I feel a little better about it. Not a lot better, but yeah, a little better. Go ahead and go here. We put counters on it. It'll put a counter on the brawler. We could... Pass or attack for four. I think we just pass here. Could be a world where we double block. I don't know that we would, but maybe. But being at 15, I feel a little better about them having to piece together some things and not really be able to punch through here. Also, if they play something like, uh, well, not that. I was thinking maybe Squee, we could have some good blocking scenarios here. All right, those get bigger. Those are real things. Uh, let's see, how do we want to go about this? We block, we could return something if we're not able to play the Knight Errant next turn. You know what? Sure. Because whatever dies, we could just bring back anyway with recommission. And I think that's fine. Oh, and they killed the Thrill Seeker Forest. Fantastic. Oh, boy. That was almost a good turn. Dang it. Alright. Well, this kind of works anyway. So I grows the Brawler. We could then remove this to grow the other Brawler. Go to our graveyard, get this. Put the counter here. And no attacks. We'll just pass for now. But if they don't have anything here, we could be off to the races. 
Godric's annoying because that does fly, which means it will fly next turn as well, so we're probably dead here. Pretty tough. Yep, that is not going to cut it. Man, sadly, we just got stuck at land for a bit. Actually, not true. Not true, because we can fling stuff here. Hmm. All right, so let's give everything plus one. Uh, put the other counter here. Actually, if we do this, these both grow. As opposed to putting a counter here and then the other grows. I guess it's kind of the same thing. It doesn't really matter, actually. They both get a plus one, so that's fine. Actually, they'll get plus two because they get one from each other, I guess. And then we attack. That's 13. Yeah, okay. I think that's still game. Maybe I had game last turn. No, I didn't. I mean, they trample, so it's all good. Yep, and then we fling and fling. Oh, we also could have sacked this and given something lifelink, too. I forgot about that. Because we have both options under here. So, yeah, we had way more than enough ways to stay protected, believe it or not. Cool. That's a sweet win against Mono Red. Lots of interactions there. But yeah, because we have the Escort under here, we're able to sacrifice the Escort. I could have given my 8 power creature lifelink, and then I would have gained up to 14 anyway. So probably wouldn't have died regardless. Just as an insurance plan, but we didn't need to because we were able just to fling there. But yeah, cool comeback considering we really got stuck at 3 land and never got to play 3 cards in our hand. So that's uh, pretty special. Okay, how do we want to go about this one? I think, yeah, we keep, we keep, we keep. We for sure want to do this. Because I think we want to open with Escort, play Brawler, and then if we're lucky, go Beast Caller into something, I think is the game plan here. So let's try that. We'll see if it works. Another red deck? Sure. Not gonna lie, I might have a false sense of confidence seeing how we had such a good comeback against that other red deck, but this will be a start. In the turn. If we can get an untapped land here, I don't think we're gonna lose. Because we play Beast Caller into this, this puts counters on things, and after that, I think we're solid gold, so. Oh, and they're getting treasure here. All right. Uh, sure. I'll block. Gonna use a, uh, rage on it? Sure. Sounds like a plan. Love that for us. We did not get the land that we wanted. We'll go ahead and go with this. And I'll go ahead and attack. I'm not going to be blocking with either of these here, so if they burn them, they burn them. Still need an untapped land. It's turn kind of similar to last turn. Alright. Oh, and they've got nothing here. So actually, this turn changes a little bit because we either go... You know, I'm just going to use one of these here. Actually, no. I can go ahead and use two. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, opponent's just dead. Yeah, because here, if we play another Apprentice, then we put another counter on Beast Caller. The Apprentice comes in with one, which also makes the Brawler five. So then I have a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4, four, four, and two one ones. But if they kill either of these, we get to grow these. If they kill the Beast Caller, we get to move counters to something else. And then we still have backup Beast Callers. Or worse for them, I play the Cauldron, I remove the Escort, and now I can just sack everything to give something else lifelink. Which is great, because if I sacrifice the apprentices to give something lifelink, I also get to move the counters that are on them. So yeah, that's bananas. Like, just great amount of interaction. Love it. Okay, we're keeping it, I guess. It's gonna be a little bit of a slow going, but sure. Not every draw is gonna be crazy explosive. Scrove. Well, Scrove doesn't tell me anything. Scrove could be a lot of things here. So, let's go with this. Uh, 
And no attacks. No need to take needless poison in case this was a <laughs> poison type. But it looks like it's not, though. But there was a chance it could have been. Oh, this is some type of human soldier sort of mess. Okay. Fair enough. Then let's get in with... Let's just do this. And I think I'm actually just going to put that there. And pass. And if they want to exile our little apprentice, then so be it. Just tough life for us. Officer, that's a good sign. Unless they have ossification. But we'd rather them ossify the apprentice than our thrill seeker anyway. Truth be told. Looks like that's what's about to happen, though. Yep. And then they didn't even attack. So we kind of got away with a little something there. I don't hate that. That's cool. Let's play this. Putting a couple counters on it. Let's go ahead and play this. No attacks, since the opponent's not attacking here. We're fairly safe for the moment. Yeah, another Vanguard doesn't quite worry us here. They could make something protection from something, but we have a colorless creature. Ah, they have a Knight Errant, though. That sucks for us. Let's see what they get off of it. I mean, we're going to try to do the same next turn. Unbeknownst to them, but still. I mean, if you got a Brutal Cathar or something opponent, you kind of got to take that, right? Not sure what the other thing would be, though. So a Cath Cathar and a Thalia. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to tap both of these. Oh, Arena, you left me no white mana? I guess it doesn't matter. We got lucky, but my goodness. Why tap? Oh, that is the worst. That is the worst. All right, pass. Well, they can get a big attack in here, which is going to suck, but it is what it is. All right, you got it. Uh, I guess I'm just taking six. I mean, if I block, I move the counters over to the Thrill Seeker. That would allow the Thrill Seeker to kill off a Brutal Cathar next turn if we felt we needed to. I mean, I guess. Sure. It's not like a huge benefit to doing this, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I mean, I really can't, because they have a Skrelv anyway. So none of this really matters. I kind of have to find another Knight Errant, truthfully, for this to have any real value, I think. Oh, that's not true either. Because after I sacrifice... Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. So I'm just thinking, well, we didn't find anything there, er, there anyway. But I was just thinking, after I sacrifice, I could instant speed remove something with a cauldron, use the apprentice to put a counter on the other thing, and then it becomes a whole to-do. So. Um, we also could turn our land into a creature. That's a thing and attack here. It doesn't do much, though. But I feel like we'd be more incentivized to put counters here. That's smarter. This gives us more quality blocks. And I think I go ahead and attack here. At least that feels correct. Because if they block, the creature still ends up in the yard and we kind of get a lot of the same we were going to get anyway. So, I don't drastically mind. Okay, so, we sack here. 
target the Cathar, they lose two life. We sack the Apprentice. Then get back our Duder. Yeah, actually it would have been better just saving the block here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to have the mana because I need to do it twice. Oh, yeah, I messed up. Yep. All right. Yeah, I definitely messed up. I messed up. That was a bad idea. Yeah, now if they have another Brutal Cathar, yeah, we just can't win. I uh, guess we keep it. All right, so we're on some type of red-white aggro we pile. Start here. Escort dead? Nope. Probably going to come in with another hasty creature, which would make sense. Nope, they're getting treasure. Well, guess what? I'm not blocking, so if you want to use your rage or whatever, would have been fine. It looks like they might have rage and a play with fire. That's not good. That's going to make it very, very hard for us to win. And I don't like that. All right. Uh, might as well attack. We have vigilance. All right, in the turn. Hopefully they don't have two burn spells here. That's the real concern. If they have that, we're in trouble. Okay, adversary, not so bad. It still gives us similar blocks to what we had before, so we don't hate that. Uh, we block here, assuming they're going to rage. And then we sack our thing. I mean, yeah, they're just deciding what they're going to rage, I think, here. Yep. Kind of assumed. So we get to kill off a creature, gain a couple points of life. Not so bad. Still at 14. Didn't do much here, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but I don't hate it. Don't hate it. Let's go ahead and bring back this for now. And then we just pass. So now we have a 3-3 and a 2-2. The 2-2 can save the 3-3 and give us lifelink. Then the next turn, we can maybe do some shenanigans. Alright, that's a card we are happy to see. What else you got? Just one in the air. We can live with that. That is one of those uh, best case scenario type things. Okay, not bad, actually. Not bad. And they have creatures in their yard, so we can remove a creature and be okay here. So, I like the idea of... Play this first. Play this. Let's see what they decide to do. Because at 12, we don't have to be in a hurry here. I'm also wondering what white's in the deck for. I'm assuming for either... I don't know. They're playing a lot of white sources, actually. I'm trying to think of what might pump creatures that could be in there. Maybe it's for removal? All right, the opponent seems like they're really trying to decide what to do here. All right, we get our cauldron. We're going to remove their duder. Put our counter on the brawler. I could have targeted the escort, but if they just have a play with fire, I didn't want to get into that silly game. So, no attack. We're going to save the block here and see what the opponent does. But I think this could just be the end of the game here. All right. 
a land we are not too concerned about bloodthirsty adversary just for them playing a monstrous rage or whatever that doesn't really change much of anything yep you got it I mean, might as well put it on the Phoenix. At least that can keep attacking. Yeah, that literally doesn't do anything. I mean, not nothing. I mean, you get to trample for two, but like... What's the point? Block, and then we just sack this. So we gain life, offset everything else. Oh, now things get to go bananas. That puts a counter on that. This puts a counter on this. Uh, cancel. No need to even do it. Actually, you know what? F it. Let's go to our graveyard. We'll just move this dude finally. Put the counters there. Just end this in two turns. That board has no way to kill us from... 14, so we're not concerned. And if we lose either of these creatures, we're just pumping the brawler even bigger. So I think they're just playing it just to play the re relentless or restless bivouac in case of board sweepers or something to have another creature attacker. But I don't think that's really the most efficient thing for a red deck, especially tap lands. They're better off just playing the foundry, I think. I mean, maybe they do have other white cards, and we just haven't seen them yet, though. Yeah, looks like they're not doing anything here. We're going to go ahead and put a counter on this. I mean, it's just going to be the biggest, baddest trampler. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a wandering emperor in their hand. <laughs> maybe they finally drew the other thing they were looking for. I don't know. Sure, we'll diversify just in case. Alright. Oh, I forgot. I could have put the counters on the Brawler, too, and that would have pumped up. Yeah, that was on the Beast Caller. That was silly. Oh, well. Let's see if they have one or not. Okay, Soul Partition. That's something. That's a real card. I mean, now you need to double block to at least kill the Beast Caller, right? To have a shot. Really? Okay. I mean, sure. Because now, almost regardless of what they draw, they can't attack with anything but the Phoenix Chick, right? Apparently not. They decided they're going to attack here. Okay, this might just be them giving up. All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, we're keeping. Don't know if these Beast Callers are going to live, but we do have a recommission at least, so that's not the worst thing. But we definitely need to find some lands, because that's going to be a real problem if we don't. Hey, good thing we have mostly creatures. Oh, you know what? Didn't even think about it. This is probably just one of the Esper decks since we just had the World Championships with a bunch of Esper decks. It usually tends to happen. Whenever you type a big Magic Tournament or World Championships or Pro Tour or something happens, you'll see a round of the decks that made the top eight showing up on socials for a minute. Yeah, not blocking. If they had Shieldred's Edict, that'd have been great. So we could just use the Apprentice to move a counter over. Which might have been what they were checking there. But there was no Rafine or anything. There's a Harbin. That's interesting. Don't know how I feel about that. I think we just go with this. And then just see if we can attack for enough to outrace them. I don't know that we can. Honestly, but we're just going to have to try our best. 
and then maybe get to where we can fling for the final damage on like turn five or six. Denik, all right. That does uh, whittle us down a little bit. I feel like it's safe to assume they have at least some type of counter. Let's start here. Oh, well, I guess I was wrong. Pump them both. Pump them both. Uh, we'll put one. Hmm. Where do I want? I guess we'll put the other one here. I guess not that it matters, because that can't attack really anyway, can it? Because the first strike. I mean, I guess it could give it indestructible. And depending on how they block, that could benefit us. Yeah, I should have put the counter on the Knight Errant, knowing that I was going to play the Escort. Realistically. Oh well. In they come. We'll get to move counters around, if nothing else. And they do get some lifelink off Denik. Wow, they're just going to take it. Crazy. Alright, in the turn. Uh, Rafine? Sure, you have a Rafine. Uh, pretty sure that's ball game, though. I mean, we get to block, like, Thalia, I guess. I mean, they'll gain life here, though. They can put three counters on Denik. So that's still something. Right? So then they go to 12. And they still have a blocker. I still don't think it matters. Okay. Sure. I mean, I guess we could just block and just let this die, because it's not doing anything else. And then just take three. Here comes an Igonjo. Yep. Seems fine. Sure. We'll put our counters on... We have, what, three? Two. Assuming they block this, put the counters here, that. All right, I'll put the counters here. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'll have no counters to move there. All right. Uh, wow, Brawler, you're nice. Okay, so here's the plan. Opponent blocks this. They take four, eight, nine... 10. Well, actually, we don't even have to fling anything. Yeah, literally, I just, I don't know, put the counters here, I guess. I mean. I mean, take 10, take 11. All right. Cool. That ended up being way easier than I thought it was going to be. Oh. This is, uh, hmm. I'm going to keep it just to see what happens, but I'm thinking this is one we're supposed to mulligan. Oh, I wasn't even planning on drawing this. I, I messed up, team. I messed up. Should have played the Escort in anticipation of drawing the Brawler. I failed you all on this day. Oh, it's that. Well, this sucks because some of their best removal is actually just giving something minuses or whatever. So that's that sucks. Though we do have Agatha's Baldrin to remove that. So that's pretty sweet, I guess. Um, hmm... All right. Do I want to attack now? I feel like I do. All right. They didn't want to block, so I don't know if that means they aren't ready to return that to their hand or if they think they can just poison us out first and then they want to proliferate. There could be a lot of reasons they didn't block. Hope they just have some stuff that destroys instead of giving us the minus four, minus four. But 
Okay, they're drawing cards here, so that gives us at least one potential big turn, but that didn't quite work out the way we wanted to. Alright. And the turn. I feel like we didn't do quite enough on that turn, sadly, even though that wasn't terrible. Feels like we needed a little bit more there to get us where we wanted to go. All right, we end up with two poison, which means it's three poison already. Good news is we're likely to not lose more than one creature this turn. Hopefully it's just a destroy effect. Nope, it was definitely the Drown and Iker, which we hate. That sucks. All right, any chance... Oh, I needed a land deck. We needed a land so bad. Ah, uh, dang it. Boy, we needed a land terribly. All right. Okay, opponent's at seven. We're still getting by for the moment. Drown and Ikers, if there's any more of those, that sucks. I don't think we can quite be poisoned out this turn, but if we don't kill them next turn, we're very likely dead from proliferate. I think they're calculating that as well. It's like, how do they kill off enough to stay alive? I think it has to be multiple Drown and Iker, though, because as long as we have the Escort, we can protect one of the 4-4s. Four All right, they're going digging. That's a good sign for us. That only puts us at 5 poison, 6 if they attack. Don't think we're going to lose more than two things here. And the Brawlers have Trample against a one toughness creature. Yeah, we're not worried about that. That's ball game, I think. Yep, yeah, opponent says GG. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Now, to be fair, this deck skimps on land, so sometimes this is going to happen. But, I mean, this is why, right? You can still win games with just the three land in play. It's real tight. Don't get me wrong. You'd love to have four. But, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Ooh, got a mulligan this. This is feels much better. Oh uh, boy, Cauldron and Ozolith here. Wow, I think I'm gonna get rid of Cauldron. Don't know if that's right, honestly, but it's a decision we've made. Okay, go in here. All right, I think our only hope here is going to be to try to go bigger. So I'm going to do this. They do have ways to exile this. Not that we can do much about it, but we do have access to Thrill Seeker and such. So we'll see what happens. I might need to draw my dude that lets me draw cards here. Honestly, might be one of our few ways to get out of this, if at all. Sure, you got it. That's interesting. I almost had a way to get rid of Calyx, but that's not going to be a deal here. Um. All right, we kind of just got to do what we can here and try. Pass the turn. I don't, yeah, I don't think we can win here. I think we had to be on the play with a strong draw to have any real chance. And assuming they don't already have, like, audacity or some such here. Where we get wrecked. Yep, here it comes. All right. Attacking with both of them. What can we do here? We double block. Turn this into... Oh, we just give it indestructible. I mean, I guess that's the best we can do. Take five. Hope not to die. Ugh. Alright. Kind of has to be what it... Actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If we keep this, we put two counters on, it becomes five. We could use that to fling at the... Kami, because... This can't protect against colorless things. So I think all I can do is block like this. 
Oh, it's going to suck if they have to put a plus one, plus one thing on it, though. Dang it. All right. I'm going to block like this. I'm going to hate it, though. Okay. But they didn't have anything. Does this work? Oh, and we get to keep the apprentice? Oh, that's huge. That is beyond huge. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So we get to put counters on the apprentice. The apprentice is going to grow the brawler. So then we attack. That's 12. Man, almost enough to just fling and kill them outright. But not quite enough. Alright. Fling kill this. Put the counters here. Alright. So now they have to have two removal cards. Because Grelf can't block and this flings. And we have a trampler. Oh my goodness. Oh. All right, so this was pretty interesting. You know, I think at the end of everything, while the questing druid was cool, I don't think it particularly did what we wanted it to do. Uh, just because it's a little slower than I think what the deck's intending to try to do. I would rather play like a protective spell there or something. Like one, play another escort, because I think the escort was just really good, uh, if I'm being real with you. The card was surprisingly spectacular and works well with the cauldron. Uh, I think if we remove the other questing druid, how many creatures would that leave us with? Still 27 creatures. So I think that leaves multiple choices if you, you want to make the changes here. You could either remove, I mean, either play a fourth cauldron, a fourth bond warden, or play just one defensive card like a Gaia's Gift or something. Either of those I think would be fine. But you probably, if I'm guessing here... Could get away with just another Bond Warden. And then just stick it to three Cauldrons. But the Cauldron's actually really nice. Uh, it gives you a way just to get extra damage and protect your stuff a little more with the Olenbach Escort. And there's some tricky things you can do if you can just sacrifice all your things. So for now, I think I'm just going to make it another Bond Warden. But truthfully, I think this could be a bunch of different things in this spot. But overall, the deck's actually pretty sweet. I, I don't really have a problem with the build as it is. Just, you're going to have some weird draws sometimes. I felt like I could probably use a 24th land a few times. We didn't draw a Knight Errant of Eros that often. So that was a thing. But as far as the list goes, uh, for, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I kind of want to go 61 cards. Now I'm thinking about it. Before I lean on, finish this up. I, I think that's what I want to do. And it's probably going to look like, I think, two Gaia's Gifts. So I think that's really... Where you're, if you're going to lose games, it's probably going to be because of that. So I'm okay. Actually, let's see. Bond Warden. It's like, I'm going to go two guys. Get to go 61 cards. Now, admittedly, we're only playing 23 land. So it's going to be a little bit iffy sometimes. But if you look at the curve of the deck, I mean, like, you're talking almost nothing. I mean, technically, we have the, the Knight Errant of Eos, but that's not really a thing. It's It costs less than that, obviously, right? Because of how we use it. So really, we only have four things that even cost three, and everything else costs two. I think if there's a deck that can get away with 61 and 23, it's this one. So here's probably what I'd play in the end. Three Enduring Bond Warden, four Escort, four Iron Apprentice, three Recommission, two Guy's Gift, three Ozolith, four Aquarian Beast Caller, four Britannical Brawler, three Attica Soul Cauldron, four Thrill Seeker, four Knight Errant of Eos, three Plains, three Forests, two Copperline Gorge, four Battlefield Forge, three... Restless Bivouac, four Brushland, four Razor Verge Thicket. Yeah, so even after playing the deck, which honestly, I think I'm gonna have to play some more off camera just to even figure out a few more small interactions here. But there's a lot of interesting things like where when your opponent might go to Sunfall, if you're able to already sacrifice all your stuff because of your escort, you can just toss everything into the graveyard, right? So you don't get your stuff exiled and they don't gain the extra one one on, on their whatever their their artifact creature right so stuff like that is actually still pretty interesting that i don't think i was even considering a lot of while i was playing like there's a lot of small things to mess up and i think you're gonna see that in the first game in this video right 
I just stumbled across a lot of different things while I was playing. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Or, oh, I could have done that. Or, oh, if I block and sack and that's a thing. So there's a bunch of different interactions, which is cool because I think one of the things these decks can struggle with sometimes is like you just put your foot to the ground and just go for it. But if you don't get there, you're kind of stuck. Whereas this, it's like, oh, well, I have all these combat tricks. I can gain a bunch of life. I can fling a bunch of things. So there's just a lot of ways you can win with this deck that's actually pretty cool. So I'm into this. This is a lot of fun, and I can see this actually being pretty competitive against a variety of decks. So if you have these parts, could be a pretty fun deck to build because a lot of these cards we've already played another list. So you're not even going to be wasting those wild cards if you craft these. And now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Bane of Progress. I actually like this card a lot. I play it in a few of my commander decks, and I don't see it played all that much. Now, sometimes it's because you're playing a lot of artifacts yourself, but if you tend to be one of those decks that's not playing a lot of artifacts and enchantment, or maybe you're running into a lot of decks that do care about enchantments, or stuff that cares about a bunch of treasure, or whatever, this is a great card to play. You wipe all that out, and you end up with like this 15-15 creature that now your opponents have to deal with, or it's probably going to end the game in the next turn or two. It's a little bit annoying because it wipes everything out, but honestly, it's a nice reset button for a creature deck. Today's act was actually a surprising amount of fun, but if you actually are looking to play something different with Naya and you want to play counters, this deck's actually really cool and you want to take a look at it because there's a lot of amazing interactions if that's your jam. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.